my Wednesday, that means it's the live chat from Wild Ginger Running, and tonight, delighted to be here with, um, well, this lady has many credits to her name. She has completed the Kate Rath Ultra 2018, when I was there and didn't complete it, big up to her, and she has completed the Spine Race 2020 um, with no blisters, um, we'll talk more on that later. She's trained to be an A&E consultant, she's a medic on the Dragon's Back Race and the Kate Rath Ultra, she's training to do the Dragon's Back in 2022 she also does the odd iron man of course it's nikki summers Woo! <laughs> hey nikki how you doing Good, thank you thanks for having me along tonight cool and i see you wearing your cape wrath ultra t-shirt there it's awesome isn't it i've got one of them too <laughs> Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? I always feel a bit odd wearing it, but I do really like it. <laughs> I really like it. It's one of the race t-shirts I've kept, actually, because it's really soft material. I really like it. Um, I just want to read you out. We've got um, quite a few people watching live already, and more will come as we get on with the show. I uh, just want to read you out some nice comments that people have put. So Sue Hewitson says, Oh, great guest, Claire. I can't wait to see what she has to say. And we've got Adrian. <laughs> we've got Adrian Orange saying, "Evening. This should be interesting. We all get blisters, right? <laughs> well, maybe not by the end of this." Hopefully <laughs> not. Yeah. And then Phil Haddock is here. He says hi. John Gardner says hi. And um, Deb White says, um, uh, "No, you should, Deb." Deb says, "I'm not sure I should be on the CW uh, for the Cape Wrath Ultra start line, but it will be good to see you there, Nikki. You definitely should be there, Deb." <laughs> um, oh. For Debs to be there, and I can give her a massive hug if we're allowed. Obviously. Yes, oh god, yeah, I hope so by then. So, Debs <laughs> helped um, with uh, Sabrina Vergie's uh, Pennine Way FKT just recently, so that's how I know Debs, and she should definitely be on the start line of the Kate Rath Ultra. Um, so a lot of hugs on the spine race as well. Oh, good, yeah, that is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Sue Hewitson is here, she says hi. Guy is here as well, he's got a question later on as well. Um, he says hi. So, um, I was just speaking to you just before we came live, Nikki. I just I was intrigued myself to know whether you personally did suffer from blisters, and I just wondered if we should just start with that because it seems like everybody here might be suffering with blisters. But how was it for you? Um, so I think that ev I think probably at, at the beginning everybody gets blisters, and I suppose there's lots of different reasons why people get blisters. Um, whether that's because you've got calluses or you've got ill-fitting feet or you've got worn out ill-fitting ill shoes or... Um, <laughs> I've got ill-fitting feet, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, or kind of worn out socks. Um, so I used to get blisters between my toes, um, my big toes kind of point in a little bit onto my second toe and I used to get really, really bad blisters. And my husband kind of kept nagging me, oh, you should really try toe socks. And I was like, oh, they look really, really weird. Um, and then he finally brought me a pair um, and it was a massive kind of convert for me. So I went from kind of, I would always blister my second toe, like any long run, anything more on the marathon, I would get blisters. I mean, I went to wearing toe socks, so I get them every Christmas and birthday. Um, oh, so um, and um, so I've got a draw for them. Um, but they, they kind of revolutionized running for me and made it a lot better. Um, I think that really the, the key with blisters is, is prevention and learning to look after your feet. So we can look at some manky pictures in a bit um, that are quite interesting and it's really important to know how to treat blisters, but much, much, much more important is how to prevent them. Um, so I learned before Kate Rath, I'd run, I think one ultra before I ran Kate Rath, I'd run Highland Fling, I definitely got some blisters. Um, and so I went on the Kate Rath website, and I think probably like everybody else, like yourself, like all the other runners, as I absorbed as much information as I could. And there's a really, really, really good page on the Kate Rath website on foot care, um, on sort of guidance for foot care. And it hammers home the fact that prevention is so important. And so um, kind of big things really for me is having nice soft feet, getting rid of calluses, because calluses is where you blister. Um, and, um, and taping, so I learned there's some really, really good videos on that website, so I learned how to tape my feet. Um, so in fact, this year on the spine, I finished the race with, yeah, my feet were sore because they've been wet for five days, um, or a bit wet, um, but I had no blisters. Um, so, and I suspect 
probably had some of the best feet in the race. I did have an argument with someone at four. He did make <laughs> the last checkpoint about his feet being the best in the race. And I, uh, <laughs> the time. They should do that at the end of races, shouldn't they? Like best in show, like <laughs> the best feet at the end of a race, <laughs> like a, like Crofts or something. Um, we've got um, someone on the live chat agrees with you about wearing the toe socks, the ones with the individual little, like it's like a glove for your foot, isn't it? It's like <laughs> the toe socks. Um, so Lee Gillum says, I agree, I always wear toe socks and I never get blisters. Um, so for me though, when I wear the toe socks, it makes my toes a little bit bigger like that in the shoe and then they just, the shoe squashes them together even more. Maybe I need to get a bigger pair of shoes. I, I think um, I think that's a, a reason a lot of people get feet problems is that your feet swell and particularly on a multi-day race like Cape Wrath, like Dragon's Back, um, your feet are going to be much bigger at the end of the week and so I don't, I think I had one pair one pair of shoes on Cape Wrath that was slightly bigger because you had bigger shoes on on the last day as well didn't you? When you yeah you I had it. one big shoe and one small shoe because I could only <laughs> fit one shoe in my shoe and I had to use my tent mate's old shoe. <laughs> um, and I think um, if you're getting lots of blisters, it might often be, and lots of toenail problems, um, it might often be because your shoes aren't big enough. Um, so I've actually just started wearing Ultra mm. um, shoes, which are foot-shaped shoes, and they're really wide at the end. Um, but even before that, I was running in Homecoast, which are a lot narrower, um, but they still fitted my toe socks in, and I didn't really have any issues with them. Mm, okay, yes, yeah, so the Ultra is a really good option. Um, the thing is, they're zero drop, so that doesn't suit everyone. Um, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. brand called Topo as well, and they make five mil drop shoes. Um, they're not very common in the UK, but they're 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 available as well. Um, oh, great. Yeah. Um, so um, let us go to the first question for you, Nikki, which is from Adrian Orange. Um, and you were just talking about this before um, in that prevention is better than the cure. But he says, how can I condition my feet, especially my toes, to prevent the blisters in the first place? What are your tips on that? Um, so basically keeping them soft and getting rid of calluses. So re regularly moisturizing them. Um, you, you, so I... I, if I don't look after my feet, I callus on the outside edge of my big toe. It, it's a point where I always get callus. But so you can get rid of your calluses by like just moisturising really, really regularly. Because people think that tough feet. There's, there's different schools of thought, isn't there? Some people think that tough feet that are really hard is, is useful and will prevent your blisters. Um, but actually, your blisters tend to happen because the calluses are rubbing against the rest of the foot. Um, and so just really regularly moisturising them, getting a pumice stone and kind of rubbing off your calluses. Um, you could go see a podiatrist or a chiropodist um, to have foot care, um, and they will scrape your calluses off. And it sounds not very nice, but they will get a scalpel and they will take your calluses off. And, and actually, that can be a really good starting point to go, to go and see an expert, get your feet in the best possible condition, Lots of runners have manky toenails, um, and they say, oh, oh, runners just have toenails like this. In fact, I met one of your um, followers on the spine, Chris, uh, who had some toenail problems on the spine. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to have bad toenails. It's, it's not inherent that runners have bad toenails. Runners have bad toenails because they haven't looked after them. Um, and if you're struggling, that's fine. Go and see someone. It might be you've got fungal infection or you've just had sort of, you've lost that nail recurrently. But if you can have sort of tidy, neat toenails and cutting them in advance of the race, not in the morning, like sort of five days before, so that they're not too sharp when you start. Mm. Um, and then, and really, yeah, so sort of doing it as much as you can in advance and also practicing with your K tape. Because I have not taped until before K Wrath, but then I, my few big runs before it, I learned how to tape so that I could do it efficiently during the race um, and also so that I knew it worked. Um, and it, it's kind of revolutionized running for me really because if I'm going for a long wet run I'll just put some tape on and my feet are, feet are all good and I don't get any issues anymore. So. Ah so you do that prior like and do you cut um can you just show us that bit of K tape that you just had there? Yeah, so, Got a so nice I, little blue bit. Yeah so I have pre-cut bits of tape that have different uses so you cut two bits like this that go on your heel. Oh, one okay. of them has a little gap uh -huh. and the other one doesn't. Okay. And they, if I can get my foot in the right position. <laughs> um, this one, one of the cut, goes over the back of the heel. Okay, yeah. Goes without cut, 
goes underneath like a, like a saddle. Ah. So on the um, Kate Rath website, there are some really, really good videos of how to tape that are recorded from a nice angle without me lifting my foot. <laughs> um, yeah. But so I have, you use two bits on the heel. Um, for me, my big problem is the inside of my big toe, the outside of my big toe. So you cut a bit like this, a bit like a Pac-Man. Um, <laughs> And that goes, um, I'll put it on and show you. So then I take my big toe, and then you can tape any toes. And I'll show you how to tape toes as well, because toenails blister, toes blister, like if you can, even with toe socks, I still occasionally blister. So this is me having taped the inside of my big toe. Ah, uh, so it's just around the outside and then the slip bit. Which side yeah. is the slip bit gone? Uh, under the bottom, so the tape sort of. Oh, it's kind of come top. round, yeah. Um, oh great! So, kind of. And, oh, sorry. Can't oh, really that's see that. cool. So, um, but it, it does I've, work to prevent blisters. But there are much better videos yeah. on the Rough website that will show you this without me sticking my foot into the camera. <laughs> yeah. So um, for anybody listening later on this live broadcast or on the podcast version, which I make tomorrow, um, Nikki was just holding up her foot and there was a nice bit of blue tape around it but if you go on the Kate Rath Ultra website and I have linked to it in the film description and it will be in the podcast show notes as well you can see those videos um, for yourself there um, so that's a really good recommendation um, and I'm really interested in the fact that you said that um, scraping calluses off is a good thing because um, we've got a couple of people here who are interested in that so so guy greatrex says he's been running for three or four years now and he's only ever had a one small blister on his arch when he wore some hockers um yeah. he says his feet have always been really dry um and he's yeah. got loads of calluses and dried skin on them and he's saying does this help to prevent the blisters but it sounds like maybe not then um i, I, I think there's different there's different schools of thought and probably what people thought maybe 20 years ago is maybe different to what they think now yeah um, I, I guess a bit of it is what works for you hmm. and what will work for a one day race or even a hundred mile a race but it's a continuous race is different to what will work for a multi-day race yeah because on something like Kate Rath you can say oh but I never blister mm. yeah but you probably never run eight days in a row <laughs> with yeah half of yeah, well, With that's what I was like. I didn't blister in my whole training. I used the same socks and shoes as my whole training. But by day four, I had these horrendous blisters because of the swelling of my feet, I think. Yeah. And so I think it's... Um, some people will swear by having hard feet, but I think generally the school of thought now and, and what, from my personal experience and my experience looking after feet on Dragon's Back as well, mm -hmm. um, soft feet without calluses seems to be the way to go. Ah, I see. Well, that answers Matthew Walker's question, which is, um, firstly, he says, great, I'm sure this will be full of useful stuff. I'd love to hear Nikki's opinion on calluses. Is it best to remove them or leave them to protect against future friction in that location? So we have the answer now. <laughs> yeah, definitely remove them because the callus is what contributes to friction and then you tend to callus around it. Um, and so generally, the points where you callus is, are going to be the points where you blister. So mm -hmm get rid of the callus, but then prophylactically tape, preventatively tape in those areas. So I will always tape my heels, the outside edge of my big toes, and then I tend to tape my second toes and my little toes. Mm. So it seems like quite a lot, but actually, and a good top tip for multi-day races is to have your tape cut in advance. Yeah. Um, have like eight little bags of tape in the right sizes because each morning, so I didn't do this on camera, and this is definitely one of my learning points, I could have saved myself a lot of time, because um, actually tape for two feet for eight days is quite a lot of tape, it's more yeah. than one, uh -huh. um, so you, you will run out, so if, if you take it already cut, if you know what works and take it already cut, it's really, really useful and saves you a load of time, yeah. especially if you get that's really good advice, definitely good advice. And that's really interesting because um, I think that, um, like me, like a lot of people, you don't tend to do anything about your blisters until you've actually got the blister. Whereas it sounds like you go, ah, oh, I know I'm gonna get a blister here potentially, I will tape yeah. it before I've even, yeah. before nothing's yeah. wrong with it. There's nothing yeah. wrong with your foot, you just tape it, yeah. Definitely worth it, definitely worth it. Yeah, okay, that's really useful. Um, we, um, people on the live chat are loving this. So Adrian Orange says, thanks for the great advice. Um, I've not tried moisturizer. I wish my toes looked like Nikki's. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my don't look. I've got finger toes, they're really long and horrible. Oh <laughs> uh, well he really likes them. <laughs> and <laughs> And and Deb says, um, I've never had worse blisters than when I blistered under hard skin. They became open wounds. Oh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> oh. um, so the next question is um, is about treating them during the race. It's from John Earp. He's like, what's the best way to treat blisters kind of mid-race? Like, do you do you do repairs or do you keep it wrapped up? And I'm guessing it's do the repairs. Yeah. And so I think we should now go through... Um, all these p horrendous pictures i hope no one's watching this during having their dinner and if you're on the podcast then you're lucky because you won't get the full extent of these pictures if you are on the podcast and you want to see these pictures this was originally on youtube so the link is in the show notes for the podcast um so should we start with this number one then nikki this is the small blister that you can treat yourself apparently <laughs> um, can you just um for anybody watching on the podcast, could you just describe it for us quickly as as well um, so this I've not got pictures in front of me but that's okay um this is a um a small blister that you can see it's quite minor um it, it isn't it isn't that big it's in a bit of an annoying place it's, is it more next to the toe yeah it's like that's just cool. under the yeah. big toe and yeah. then the next toe like there on the foot that's yeah um, and um, yeah, so that's but one of the big things on Kate Rath uh, and on Dragon's Back as a medic is I don't want to see your basic blisters, I want you to sort them out. Mm -hmm. Um, because yes, we are there, and, and um, Shane and Aria have put, put together like a, a fabulous medical team, which is really, really, really good, but um, we still don't we don't want to have to be doing really basic blister care because if you can look after yourself and the other thing is teaming up with your tent mates to look after each other um, is really really important so within my tent um, I guess they were quite lucky because they had an A&E doctor and another doctor in our tent um, <laughs> so um, we all looked after each, after each other really um, but so this is this is in an annoying place. Blisters on the bottom of the foot are painful. So you're going to put a lot of weight through there. Okay. So, but basically, I don't want to see a blister like this, and I will tell you if I the medical <laughs> go away. Is, I will tell you to go away and sort it out for yourself because when you get your blister kit, it comes with instructions on how to manage blisters, and this is a, a basic blister. Okay. So, any blister you need to clean it. Okay. That's first off. Also, we don't want to see dirty feet. Like, you've got to clean your feet, you've got to look after them. When you get back into camp every night, the first thing you need to do is clean your feet and dry your feet because you've got to give them the best chance of drying out to be usable the next day. Um, so there's always a big debate about whether to drain a blister or to leave it. Personally, what I do for myself, I drain all of my blisters. I'm a big fan of draining, okay? Um, but that's not necessarily the best practice, okay? Um, so I appreciate that lots of medics won't agree with me, and therefore that is not necessarily the advice that I would give to this person. So it depends how painful it is, because blisters are painful when they're swollen. The, the kind of swelling of the fluid is what hurts. So you, if it's not too painful, I would put a dressing on top of it. And most of the time, what we use to dress blisters is just strips of K-tape, strips of that blue tape, but what you want to do is just put a little bit of padding on top. So in your blister kit, you get these um, little packs of gauze. All they've got is uh, these little white bits of kind of cottony stuff. So you could cut yourself a little circle, um, but you would stick over your... So you cut yourself a little round bit, do that. Stick that over the blister, and then to stop it rubbing, to stop friction. So you'd put a little dot over the saw bit, and then you would put a rounded bit of K-tape. So anytime you use K-tape, round the corners, okay? Because uh -huh. then it stops coming off. Put it on and then you need to rub it for sort of 20 seconds to really activate the glue, okay, to make it stick properly. Um, everyone's got different opinions about the brand of K-tape. Rock tape is definitely the best. It's also the most expensive. Um, I actually had some from Aldi recently that was really, really good and still stuck on at the end of the day of running in, in the wet. Um, so that's quite good. Um, but so clean it, pad it, tape it. That's basically what we do with all blisters, but some blisters we drain. But when you decide, when you're making a decision about draining something, you need to be aware that if you drain something, you're potentially going to increase the risk of infection because you're making a hole. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anytime you make a hole, 
and this is what we say in my job all the time at work as well, anytime I make a hole there's a risk of infection, so whether that's putting a cannula in um, or something more complex, um, anytime you make a hole it, it increases your risk of infection, but so you've got to decide is that blister too painful and are you going to take that risk? If it was me, for my blisters, and this is where a lot of my experiences come from, is from my own ultra running, but then sort of translated to start uh, working as a medic um, on races, is I would I would drain that and then stick some K-tape over it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so how would you drain that? Would you um, get a sterile needle? Is that how you do it? No. So in your blister kit, you get some scalpels. They're not quite like this one. So this one's got a long handle on. What you actually get in your blister kit is just a blade okay so if you look at the end of that okay oh, nice. and so they <laughs> recommend um what is this? um i think this is a size 11 and the size 11 i believe is is what you get in your blister pack because different scalpels have got different different points believe it or not so different numbers mean different shapes um, and so a size 11 has got this nice um point on the end so it would be good for draining blisters so what I would recommend is basically you make multiple holes, oh, okay. um, so kind of like like slits, not just holes if you can, yeah. um, to allow it to empty, but also so that it doesn't refill. Okay, because it's it's you don't just want to drain it; you want to stop it filling. Okay, uh-huh. um, and then when you're draining a blister, um, really you want to drain it and then you want to dry it out. And then so on something like Kate Raff, you might drain something in the evening. And then dress it in the morning. Oh, um, I see. So yeah, have it kind of dry out before you dress it. Oh, okay. And then would you put like an antiseptic thing on top once you've drained yeah, it? So yeah. When you clean it, um, use alcohol wipes. You get little. This isn't quite the one that comes in a pack, but this is an alcohol wipe. Um, so you get an antiseptic alcohol wipe, and so you will clean it first before you drain it, yeah. and then you put some antiseptic cream on it. Um, yeah. So yeah, kind of whatever you've decided to carry in your first aid kit, but not a lot of it because you want it. To, you don't want it to be wet. You want it to dry out. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's good. And so when you talk about the blister kit, is this the one that you can buy from Aria Events, like from from yeah, Kate exactly. and then drags back? Yeah. Exactly. So uh-huh. They have a list of what what they recommend, and so that is it comes with some packs of gauze, some simple kind of what they call island dressings, which are like a bit of a bit of gauze with kind of you, you, a big sticky plaster basically it comes with some compedes um which we don't really recommend um and it comes with moles or used to come with moleskin i don't think it does now but i would definitely recommend putting this in for water day races because you can pad the bottom of your foot out um oh. when you've got macerated feet and stuff like that which oh. we'll come on to in a bit Oh, great. Well, that's great because yeah. Debs is asking what about moleskin. So that's great that we'll come out of that for a bit. And then yeah. and then I did warn everyone before we started putting these pictures up, but Rich Simpson is just saying, I'm just going to delay eating my pork chop dinner. <laughs> yes. <laughs> delay your dinner, everyone, because these pictures, there is nine of them and they get way worse. So the ne- <laughs> are we good to go on to the next one? Um, okay, so this one is called Burst Me Small, picture number two. So that is a that huge is. kind of, it looks like a bulbous nose on the back of someone's heel. It's yeah. such a big blister. It looks it looks kind of like quite yeah. easily treatable. Yeah, so the annoying thing about that is is where it is. It's on your, over your Achilles insertion. So that's going to be really annoying and it's going to keep rubbing. So that absolutely needs to be drained. Um, so basically with your scalpel, clean it with your alcohol wipe and then multiple holes in it and get all of the um, mankiness, all of the kind of fluid from it out of it, massage it out so it's nice and empty. And then if this is a multi-day race, I'd leave that to dry overnight and then dress it in the morning. And because of where it is, that is that is going to rub, that's going to keep rubbing. So again, I'd put um, a cut up bit of, um, of swab um, and then I'd put K-tape. So we talked about Take, I talked about taping the heel anyway with your two bits, and this is probably just above where that tape would be. So I just put another bit, sort of wrap it around the back of the heel, um, like that, and with always with curved edges, cut corners off, so you'll have a house full of little little <laughs> blue corners. I'm always finding them in my house. <laughs> yeah, and that one, um, uh, because of gravity, would you suggest putting the little insert cutting just under that blister so that when you're walking about it kind of drains downwards or does it not matter? Would you just no, slice I'd, all the way around? I'd, just, I'd, put, I'd put multiple in, multiple slits in it really, um, yeah. so it as well as possible. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah, so wherever you are, like lying down or wherever. Okay, cool. Um, well, um, yeah, we're getting a lot of love for you tonight here, Nikki, on the live chat. We've got um, Ruth says, um, what a fascinating subject. Big problem for me, always get di blisters, blisters on long distances. So hopefully yeah. we can help you with a bit here tonight. Um, and then somebody, um, I was going to ask this as well, but someone, um, Daddy Bisson on the live chat says, why not Compede? Um, so uh, well, uh, they swear by them, <laughs> but only you, they've only done 100 miles in one day yet and not done any multi-days. Do you want to jump ahead to picture five and yeah. I'll show you why Compede? Okie dokie, this is a non-using of compi picture. So Soz, everyone, this is a disgusting picture. It's basically like an open wound of skin on someone's heel. And it looks like a compede has been there. Because um, compede stick. So on a one day event, they're probably okay, but um, they stick to the blister and they pull it off. Okay, so they can make they go, they go kind of rock hard and horrible, on, so on multi day stuff and when they're getting wet. So on a one day event, you'll probably get away with it and that's fine. Um, but on multi day stuff, absolutely not, um, because they stick to it and they then pull everything off. Yeah, they so stick to your sock as well, don't they? They just kind of glue to the sock, and then when you take your sock off, it's really hard not to take the blister plaster off with your skin with you. Like yeah, this person's exactly. obviously doing there. He's taking his sock off, they're, they're, and it, and the blister is peeling they're, off. They're, and so that would be quite difficult to treat because a that's going to be painful to remove, and then b you've got a big massive wet gunky hole. Um, so you'd try and dry that out with some zinc oxide um, cream potentially, um, which is quite a good. You can just buy it on the internet. It's quite a good way of um, sort of drying out blisters um, and then you would want to put a non-adhesive dressing um, on that so something that doesn't stick to it um, and then put k-tape on top of that again so something not something non-sticky and then tape on top of it would be how mm -hmm. it yeah so that's, that is why not compete yeah um, that's I, really useful well, to know because well, i think well, like maybe. when when i was doing all my hiking at school compete had just come in like this is in the 90s yeah. early 2000s and everyone was like oh compete is brilliant it's basically like a padded plaster yeah. it's like yeah. two in one but you're yeah. saying now the thinking is more like the moleskin the padded stuff the gauze yeah. and then the k-tape oh. over the top there is a role for compete because they do act like a second skin um but i think that role is not really in multi-day racing because they cause damage like this mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's that's good to know okay um cool okay so um so we've done the treat yourself one we've done the burst me one then we've got one called de-roofed small shall we talk about that one now then um, so this is just a blister that's had the roof taken off of it so it's a heel isn't it and it looks a bit kind of red and a bit sore and a bit sloughy. Yeah. Um, so I guess the risk with this one is anytime you take the top off the blister, there's a risk of infection, as, as we talked about. Anytime you drain, it'll take the top of it. Um, but this will have been a big blister on heel. Um, this may even have been the compete blister, um, de-roofed potentially. Um, and um, so with how you manage that after you de-roofed it, because when you, when leaving the skin on acts as a protective layer, even though it may continue to rub, but mm. once that layer's off, that's going to be more painful. So and it's that's what you're calling de-roofed when the skin is off, and you've got like this yeah. bare kind of red yeah. skin like underneath. If, you kind of, if you've got a, it is quite good certainly afterwards to de-roof blisters because otherwise you can get like you can you're more likely to get infection inside them and stuff mm -hmm. because you've got dead skin and dead tissue inside. So if you take the top off. Um, it can it can scab over and heal that way. Um, so in a race, um, there is a magic dressing called inadine mm -hmm. that is not in the list kits, um, but me and Charlotte have recently discovered and are in love with, um, and that's really good for reducing infection. So if this look, this looks a bit sloppy, so in this case I'd probably put some inadine on it, but then I'd put an, on top of that I'd put a non-adhesive dressing and I'd put K-tape. Because really, every blister is going to have K-tape on top of it, let's be honest, <laughs> and everything can have something that doesn't stick and then some K-tape on top of it. Quick, buy shares in K-tape. Um, so this inadine, is that a cream or is it a dressing? Sorry, I don't know what it's, it is. <laughs> it's, um, 
it's a dressing that helps reduce um, infection, basically. So you can buy them, I think you can buy them on Amazon, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but it um, it helps draw infection out of wounds. Um, so like, it's it's really good, like if you've fallen over and taken all the skin off your knees, for instance, that's when I've used it most recently. One of our nurse practitioners uh, just sorted my knees out for me after an amusing fall in lockdown. <laughs> um, but it's very good for kind of helping re helping remove infection and reduce infection. Um, so um, I think it's been superseded by something else now that's supposedly even better. Um, but we're a big fan of it because it just helps dry out and heal um, and heal kind of without all the infection really. So it's quite good. Yeah. And so is this the kind of blister that you could go to the medic tent with on the Cape Wrath Ultra or the Dragon's Bat? Yeah, I'd be very, very happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and yeah. if if you're happy and confident managing it yourself, that's really really good because that's the best place to be in is to be happy knowing what, knowing what you're doing and sorting yourself out. Because also we have a queue generally, and you have to wait. And time is precious, particularly like it was evident last year on Dragon's Back. People, we were opening the medical tent at five a.m. But if you're at the slow end of the field and you're starting at six and just getting in in time for the cut off. You want to start at six. You don't want to be waiting in a queue to see us to get your blister sorted to get going. If it's something that you can sort yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, that's great. So that's de-roofed small covered, and now number blister number four is a blood blister. Which oh, that's a good one, isn't it? There, it's under the big toe on the pad of the foot. So it's like on on this bit where you're constantly going to be putting your weight on, and it mm. just looks really painful. Yeah, so exactly that is going to be really painful. So the school of thought with blood blisters is that you should try not to drain them. Um, so other blisters, I'm a massive advocate for draining, but the problem with blood blisters is if you drain them, there's a, there is an increased infection risk because blood is there. And blood is a really good place for bacteria to grow because it's full of not, lots of nutrients. Um, so we try not to drain blood blisters if we can help it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's give and take. That's a really painful place. If you can manage to run on it, keep running on it. Like obviously pad it. So this would be a really good place to use the mole skin that Deb's talking about. So put something that doesn't stick first and then put some mole skin on top of it and then put some physio tape on top of that to hold the mole skin in place. Um, but realistically in that place, that's probably gonna to be too painful and you are gonna drain it. But you really need to know that the risk of that draining it increases your risk of infection and then you need to know what to look out for um, with infection. So kind of like lots of swelling and redness and angriness basically. Yeah, okay, well, that's really useful to know. Um, so don't drain blood blisters, but do drain other blisters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but you, you, can, you can drain them if it's too painful, but just be aware that it increases the infection risk. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and then we covered the compede blister. So um, if anybody is new to the chat just now on the live show, then um, scroll back a few, a few minutes. We covered that. Um, then we've got this beautiful picture of a guy with really, really um, crinkly feet. It, he looks like a dead person, these feet. Yeah. They look like trench so, foot feet. <laughs> it's yeah, a great it's picture. Not quite trench foot, but they're not far out. But yeah, so these are really macerated feet that are full of water. Um, and so this is really difficult when you're running wet races. And so it's how you avoid this. So it really, again, it all comes back to prevention. And so on a race like the spine, um, lots of people wear waterproof socks. Um, I wear knee-high striker waterproof socks, like hey. quite a few of us. <laughs> they're really good. Um, but even then, they don't necessarily prevent you from getting um, getting wet feet. And I wouldn't wear, I wouldn't tend to wear waterproof socks in the summer because you get too hot. Um, but and so we wouldn't recommend wearing Gore-Tex shoes um, because what will happen is that you'll get water in your shoes and then it won't get out again. So if you do want to wear a water barrier, wear waterproof socks, but still being aware that you can get water in them. So actually, more important is having um, shoes that drain well. Um, so I had a recent, I ran the Slate Trail um, in July and it was really, really wet um, and I wasn't really expecting it to be that wet um, and I was running in a newer pair of hopers than I'd ran Kate Rath in and I didn't have any problems on Kate Rath. Um, my feet were really, really macerated and the last 20 miles were um, quite slow and painful um, because 
my, that pair of shoes just didn't rain. They, they've changed the uppers to make them more durable, and it's definitely a more durable upper, but it doesn't drain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, so the, prevent the... And then macerated feet are quite, are quite hard in the middle of a race. If it's the middle of the day, um, they're going to be really sore. Um, but so it's it's as much what you do to try and sort it out once you get into camp. So sticking some people talk about talcum powder and um, put lots of powder on them. Who knows what's best? Um, but really drying them out and then giving them a chance to recover. So uh, keeping them open, massaging them is supposed to be really really good to get the blood going and just get them sort of going back to normal. And then um, giving them a chance to dry out. So some comfortable sandals or, or shoes, um, but like keeping them open as much as you can in the evening so that they can dry out ready for the next day but they will be sore they'll be sensitive the next day i would say yeah they look really sensitive they look like zombie feet um <laughs> i just realized we also had a question from arlene matelock about this um uh she well she specifically ad asking about what's the best way to prevent blisters when running through streams and rivers and very wet areas um and she's saying do you ever recommend foot powder or would you recommend like a vaseline type product so i wouldn't recommend vaseline because it goes hard in your socks um so i've got a uh I sometimes use this. I must admit, I'm not very religious about using it. It's just a blister stop, um, two Tom's blister sh blister shield. Um, so you can use you can use something like that. Um, we would not recommend Vaseline um, because it it does go hard in your sh in your socks and can make things a lot worse. Um, so yeah, powders is good. Um, and then once it is like this, the balls of those feet particularly are going to be really, really sore. So this is when your um, moleskin or your fleecy web, so I don't know if you've ever seen moleskin, but it's like, um, it's furry. It's kind of nice and soft, um, a bit cuddly. If you <laughs> it looks it. lovely. It looks like a cuddly toy, like a strip of yeah. a cuddly toy. <laughs> so the negative of moleskin is, if you look at it from the side, it's quite thick. It's probably only a couple of mils, but compared mm. to K-Tape, which is like, there's nothing to it from the side. It's significantly thicker. Um, so more skin is good and it, it can just help pad out sore areas. So getting a nice curved bit of more skin under the worst bit of the ball of your foot can can help with the pain from this. So you'd put more skin, which has a peely back, um, peely back, sticky back. Um, so you peel off, um, peel it off um, and stick it to your foot. And then you would put some K tape on top of that to secure it in place. Yeah. Um, so that's what I would do once once you've got it is dry it out and then then put this on it. Um, but yeah, just trying to pre trying to prevent it. So you can use powders. Um, dry your feet as soon as you can. The first priority when you're back in camp or at the end of the day is getting those feet dry so that you can be good to go the next day. Mm -hmm. So it's more about admin as well as the actual treatment oh. of the blister. Yeah. Because your your general admin will help you. How you admin your feet will help you look after your feet and go to the end. Yeah, and and you said um, you didn't recommend Vaseline. Um, so uh, we've got a question on the live chat from Guy. He says, "What about Gurney Goo? Like, um, oh, it's kind of like a different so thing." I haven't used Gurney Goo, so I can't advocate for it. But I have heard. I think Damien Hall swears by it. Um, and the person I was having a debate with, who claimed to have the best feet on the spine race, when I actually did, um, <laughs> sorry, competitive. Um, he, I believe, he used Gurney Goo, um, and I, I think in I think in winter races it can be quite good. I think generally in in the summer it's maybe less helpful. But I I don't know because I haven't used it. But it, it I think it's like a it's like a water repellent thing, so it can sort of create a barrier on the outside of your feet. Um, and certainly Rob, who I finished a spine with, um, he did use it, and he also had good feet. Um, so there's obviously something. And if Damien Hall advocates it, there's got to be. Um, something good about it that man knows his stuff so yeah yeah and he runs a very long way <laughs> um and so there's there's quite a few comments about the, the wet feet issue on the live chat and and deb's has said uh, she just discovered deck shells waterproof socks yes. um and she's yes. loving those so there's deck shells isn't there yes. there's seal skins there's bridgedale to a storm yes. sock as well so there's lots of different types now um, so I, um i use deck shell ultralight or ultra thin, i think um 
I had some previous seal skins, I didn't get on them because they were a bit of a thicker. The problem with waterproof socks is you're going to have to size up shoes. Mm. So on the spine, I had, I used to run in um, Las Pativas and I, and I tend to in winter for waterproof socks underneath them and I had my usual pair of shoes, I didn't even bother with them. I went up one European size and then another European size because you, you, you've got to allow for the fact that they're much thicker than normal socks. And the other thing I would say about waterproof socks is practice in them. Um, and I would recommend using a liner sock. So in Gingy, who make the toe socks, do a merino liner toe sock, um, which is really thin. Um, but waterproof socks will never be perfect and they will only last so long, particularly the thinner ones, because at the end of the day, the membrane will break, plastic membrane that keeps them dry. Um, so they're good for keeping your feet warm, but they don't always keep them dry. Um, but um, having a liner, so interesting, on the spine race, I saw a guy come into a checkpoint who had, um, it wasn't even halfway through the race, it was at Malam Tarn, so like checkpoint 1.5 really, um, took his waterproof socks off, didn't have a liner on, I saw his feet, and obviously I wasn't medicating, I was running, um, but I looked at his feet across the room and was like, hmm, that guy's not going to make it to the next checkpoint, and he oh, didn't. Um, yeah. So, so it, like, it's so important to practice in, practice in what you use. But yeah, I'm a big fan of deck shells, but I do wear a liner sock underneath them. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that because you were a big advocate for the toe socks, and I'm not aware yeah. of them making a waterproof shop. No, so, yeah, no, that no. goes around each toe. Yeah, <laughs> wear, um, wear a liner toe sock underneath them, or, or another liner sock uh, toe socks. Um, but I would, yeah, I, I really like the Ingenji, um toe socks and their, their merino liner. It's not that durable because um, it's quite thin, but it is really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not left down yet. So. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, that you can do all this work on your fitness, but if you don't also put the work in and the care and get the experience on your yeah. feet, you can totally yeah. scupper your race however fit you are. I think that's it. It's, a, it's really, really important, isn't it? Because we spend, like Cape Rapids, an expensive race. Yeah. You, you can spend a lot of money and a lot of time. A lot of races that cost a lot of money, and you might spend months and months and months preparing, but actually you need to prepare for the whole the whole thing and actually looking after your feet and learning properly how to take them and to take care of yourself is I finished um, reasonably well in the spine place wise surprisingly actually because I'm not that fast but what I am good is being efficient a sort of checkpoint admin and looking after myself so I didn't have any injuries I if anything sped up in the race because I had good feet and was able to just keep moving and not have problems not have to wait to see medics and things like that which is really really important so yeah yeah it's really really good tips i think it's yeah it's really interesting everyone always focuses on the training side but yeah this is so important especially for those longer races and multi-day stuff um and we've got some some people on the live chat are like yep i, I know these feet so this, these macerated feet that we're looking at now rich simpson says yeah my feet were like that after the 100 mile of breckham beacon way no blisters but really wrinkly yeah and i think <laughs> um, I think for a one day race, like like a hundred, I say call a hundred mile or a one day race, it wouldn't be a hundred, uh, wouldn't be a one day race for me. I'm slow, um, <laughs> but um, it, uh, for like a single continuous race, you can almost get away with it yeah. because it's just one day and you've got to get to the end. It was the same for me at the end of the Slate Trail. Um, my feet were like that, but it was one day. I got to a van and I was finished. Um, but yeah, and so it's maybe it's less important on a one day race. But it's the multi-day races where you've really got to get on top of this. So that because how how many people end their race because of foot problems? Loads and loads and loads of people. So you just got to be a uh, got to get it sorted. Yeah, definitely. That's that's the one thing I would have to really concentrate on if I ever went for something like that again. Um, and yeah. Edward Johns, um, he's got an interesting comment here. He says that powder in socks and shoes can really delay or mitigate wet feet in summer. Yeah. He says it worked really well for him on the Dragon's Back in 2019. Congratulations, yeah. Edward, for that. Nice one. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, I've not used it personally, but that's really good to know that it works. Um, there's a good book um, called Fix Your Feet. Ah. Um, this is basically the Bible of foot care. Um, yeah. It's, um, it's super good. Um, and that talks about powder for reducing maceration. And also, once you once you are macerated, treating it with lots of powder to help dry it out. 
Yeah, so that, is that talcum powder or, or is that yeah, a, a new yeah. thing now? <laughs> I'm so old fashioned. <laughs> when I did yeah. all my long distance walking stuff and learned about all this stuff, I think it was like 1996. <laughs> so I was like 12. So we, like it was compied all the way. And, 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 um, and what, what did we do? We were supposed to like wash our feet in something. Um, I don't know, bicarbonate of soda or something weekly before you raced and then you'd harden your feet. It was all about hardening the foot. Yeah, soaking them in TCP to get them hard. Yeah, stuff like that, like, yeah. Some people will still do that, but I'm not a fan. Yeah, it was all old school. Um, okay, well, I'll link to that book um, in the YouTube description, uh, video description, if anyone's keen for that. And I'll also link to that in the podcast show notes as well. It um, is it's quite in-depth. Um, it is 300 and... 60 odd pages of very tiny font um, oh. <laughs> so it's useful as a reference yeah um, but, but don't expect like better i'm reading no, no. <laughs> yeah the, don't get the audiobook <laughs> um so there's um uh, we had the question about gurney goo um so i don't know if you'll be able to answer this one as well but there's um there's various conversations on the live chat going on about um what about squirrels nut butter um or or um yeah uh, leaf ocr says that as well um would it be possibly a similar question to gurney goo but would you suggest squirrels nut butter um i know marcus well guy says marcus scottney really likes it um yeah i presume it's i presume it's equivalent yeah. to goo is it a moisturizer or is it like a let me google um, that it's like you know that blister shield stuff that you held up oh. i think it's pretty much like that it's like an anti-chafe anti-blister yeah. um sort of thing it's quite expensive um so yeah. so i'm guessing it's really yeah. good <laughs> i'll link yeah. to that in the i'll link to all of that but in the show notes as well called, um but stop um, yeah like be stop but stop but i think is um i think it's the same brand as this it's two tongs and that's uh -huh. a really good anti-chafe um i've never used it on my feet but it's quite good for other chafe areas yeah uh-huh um, and we'll talk about chafing in, in just a sec before we get on to the last disgusting picture as well because uh, there's another question um that's coming but i'll just tell you a funny story when i first heard about squirrels nut butter i think like jim you know jim walmsley and all that like co-casino cowboys over in america they're all sponsored by squirrels nut butter and I was like, oh, that's cool, squirrels nut butter. I thought it was like a peanut butter, like a, like a so peanut right. butter thing. And I was like, why are they putting it on their balls? That's really weird. Then I realized it was like a gurney goo type thing. But yeah, cool. funny story for you then. <laughs> um, but John um, Moisey wants to know about the chafing. Um, so he says, when should you butter up? Um, and how often should you reapply as a rule of thumb? Um, he says here that he seems to never notice um, for long effort and then um, when a load of water hits you in like from seams or backpack straps and stuff um, things just get on fire um, yeah. so yeah he just wants tips on timings and how liberal one needs to be with this buttering up business <laughs> you will know where you chafe you will learn where you chafe when you've done when you've started to do more today stuff so chafe in advance because you know so I know when I run with my fast pack if I'm doing overnighters so like on um, the spine or like this weekend I went to run around the peninsula I didn't take my back I've got a scab on my spine um, so certain points I tape there's this tape called hyperfix um, this is the five centimeter width hyperfix uh, you can also get ten centimeters width this is super good so I've had this on my back for five days in a very wet adventure race Wow. And it did come off, and I didn't chafe. Um, so I wouldn't put this like in flexures, like under your arms or in your groins. But if you have a point, like say on your shoulder, um, mm -hmm. you can put it there. I mean, people know where they get. You will learn where you get your rub points, but because the big thing is practicing with your kit. So if you get a rub point up here, like I know if I'm carrying a heavy rucksack. Um, but I get a, a bit up here depending on what sack I'm using. So you could put some of the fleecy web, the mole skin up there to pad it out maybe. Um, but hyperfix is, um, it just, it lasts. So to certain points I would recommend using hyperfix. So particularly on your back, if you know, if you've practiced with your kit enough, you will know. Tape, tape or put anti-chafe stuff on the bits that you know are going to chafe and just put it on in advance. Don't wait because once it's chafing, once it's sore, it's a problem. So it's really easy just to get your roller stick, um, so put it on any bits, whether that's your groin, 
seen some bottoms on dragon's back actually someone had to show me their bum for me. <laughs> had some nice jay thing um so um yeah it, it happens it happens to all of us unfortunately um some of us are bigger than others some of us will chafe a bit more because we're a bit more rounded and myself included um so just um yeah put it on in advance don't let it be a problem because it, it can be really sore and just ruin your race. So and this is supposed to be fun, isn't it? So prevent the problems and you'll enjoy it more. Yeah, chafing is the worst. Like chafing and blisters, oh my goodness. Like I remember on my Bob Graham, it just like peed it down the whole time, pretty much. And I remember on the last leg, I had a really chafing bum, I remember now, yeah. Um, yeah. because my leggings were so wet for so long yeah. that yeah. I, my bum cheeks were like chafing together and I didn't have anything but a lip seal. <laughs> so I remember. But I had to gouge out this lip seal with my finger and then attend to said area yeah. and I thought everyone had gone past I was like everyone go ahead of me go ahead and uh, this guy called Tim bless him he stopped behind to take photos of the view and then all of a sudden there's me like crouched down like trying to get this like scout um, scraped out lip seal uh, to chafe my butt and like he just saw everything and um, it was very unpleasant for him so uh, that will teach him for taking photos of you and to chase stuff really good and there's, there's different brands I guess like scrolling up butter and um, once you have chafed pseudocreme is really good and they do these mini tubes which is perfect they also do small little round ones like the size of a um, Vaseline tub um, and that's perfect because something like this you can have it in your bag and you, like on the big stuff you can always carry it if you know you've got a sore bit but this is really good for bottoms um, in your bum cheeks um, so that's quite useful um, it can it just it's a barrier cream um, so it soothes and, soothes and protects as it says yeah. um, but that's quite useful so I'd recommend that if it's good enough for babies it's good enough for us exactly <laughs> that's what they use isn't it on baby snappies yeah, yeah exactly yeah. and so this brings us to oh it's not the last one it's the second to last picture um yeah. these feet are macerated so they're really trench footy um and then there is also a blister on the bottom and it looks like somebody's tried to patch them up slightly with with what looks like compede perhaps um it's it's I all a mess that, it looks horrible I think these are probably the same feet as the last picture i think oh. this is macerated again it's the same person so not uh -huh. only the matter but they've got blisters as well yeah and it, thing. Uh, this is just Look after your feet. Don't let them get in in this position. This is going to be difficult to treat because these feet are potentially race race ending feet um, when they look like that. So you're going to have to we'll we'll do blister care the same as we always would. So we clean everything up and then sort of pad and tape it. But that's gonna those feet are going to be really 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 sore. It's quite a nasty one, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. that does look sore. So yeah, like do the same thing again. Um, and then the last picture that we've got here, oh no, there's another one. Oh, they go on and on. Um, this is a toenail. We've got a toenail and then we've got an infected blister. So this this toenail is basically, it looks like a little finger, but it's not, it must be a little toe. Um, and the nail is, oh, it's gross. It's just coming straight off. It's, um, yeah, it's like someone with leprosy. All of it, all of this comes back to, I'm not sure how PC that is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally curable now isn't it that disease this comes back to preventing problems so um so you can tape your toes so to tape your toes you get two bits two little bits of k tape and you put i'll show you my little finger one over the top like that uh sort of over the nail that way yeah um and then the other one will go I'll just put it on and you can see and the other one will then go in a circle around it but not oh, too tight right. okay um, so over so the top and then one around and yeah the, and the, the big thing with toes is having shoes that are big enough because it's not acceptable to have man well it's up to you everyone chooses how they have it have their feet but if you have if you start a race with monkey toes how do you expect them to be like, you, like our feet are so important for running like you've got to look after them, you've got to treat them well and be nice to them um, so that they will get you to the end. And so this person probably had a monkey toe before they started. Um, but so taping them, so if you can see here, there's a bit of t there's a bit of tape that goes over the top and then there's a bit of tape that goes round in a circle. And that's just on my little finger, but that's the same way you tape your other toes. So you wouldn't tape your big toe like that, you put it on the side like I have done, um, but you would um, you take you take the other toes like this. And again, coming back to the Kate Ruff website, there's some really good videos there that, that show you how to do it. But um, once this toe's like this, you need to take it off. Um, but um, 
really it's trying to prevent it being like that um so taping and having shoes that are big enough yeah having shoes that are big enough so you'd take that bit of nail off and just tape over the top yeah i mean that's yeah. basically off anyway so and then you'd need to watch out for infection because it looks a bit sloppy yeah which leads very well into the last picture <gasps> yeah the last picture is Da, da, da. Oh my goodness, this this person looks like they might be in hospital. This is an infected yeah. blister. Um, yeah, so, yeah, somebody's got some really kind of black toes here. Yeah, so these look like some nasty infected toes from having infected blisters. Mm. So, really, um, you probably won't get to this position during a race. This might be how you are afterwards. But it is worth saying that in something like HRAF, we do have antibiotics in the medical tent if you needed them. But really, it's about preventing this. So looking after your blisters in advance so that you don't get into this position. Keep, and then once you look, preventing blisters, and then once you have got them, really making a big effort to keep it clean. So if you're using a scalpel, making sure everything's been cleaned first with the alcohol wipe and dressing stuff properly and making sure it's all washed every evening. Yes, yeah. So th would this be a, um, a race ender, do you think, this kind of Absolutely. blister? Well, yeah. it depends how the person is, but yes, because this person is going to need antibiotics. These are really, really nasty feet. Um, so yeah, this would... I. We don't like to tell people to stop running. We like people to make their own decisions because what one person can run with, another person can't. Um, and it really depends on... I think a lot of it is, is meant pain... A lot of pain is mental there's always a psychological aspect to pain anyway and it's what you can what you can choose to ignore what you can't ignore and some stuff is too painful some people will continue with much worse stuff um but you could end up really really sick with this and those are very nasty toes that need sorting out so yeah yeah yes probably needs best urgent attention those ones um and then the last picture that we are talking about here is an expedition blister kit um, um yeah yes yeah. These are the blister kits that you can buy from Aria. Um, so when you sign up for Kit Wrap or Dragon's Back, so the little green and white things you can see in the picture are just the um, alcohol wipes. The thing on the left of the picture is um, gauze. There's some instructions on how to use it. There's scalpels and there's dressings. So lots of useful stuff. You can make up your own pack, but you'll actually find you won't end up making up for much cheaper than you can buy it for from um, Aria because um, by the time you've bought stuff in bulk, you may as well just buy it from Shane. And it comes with some really useful pictures on the top and how to look after your blisters, which is really helpful. Um, but really, get this in advance. Don't get it when you arrive because you think you can get it posted out to you. Um, and learn how to use it and learn how to look after your feet so that you can keep enjoying your races because no one wants to have sore feet. It, it is really painful we, mm. we we put ourselves through these things out of choice we want to enjoy them um, but so having the best feet that you can so that you get the most enjoyment out of races is really important definitely i will wholeheartedly agree with you there nikki and we just got one final question um from vic who um who says this will be a very interesting talk um it would be good to understand the common causes and preventions yes we've done that and he says what about treating them when you get back home like should you just take all the plasters off and walk around in flip-flops or what do you do um when you get back i think yeah undress everything but, I mean at the end of every day anyway you're generally going to take your dressings off and let stuff dry but yeah when you get home get stuff undressed get stuff clean and whether that's washing it in salt water putting lots of antiseptic on it um, putting antiseptic cream on it but giving stuff a chance to dry out and then watching it after the race because it's it's quite common to get infected blisters after a race and it's hard because your feet are going to be swollen anyway but you want to look out for more swelling and then for redness, and particularly redness, we call it tracking when it goes upwards. So if you had an infection, say this was a toe instead of finger, redness here, but then it starts going up the foot. So there's the redness what, uh, spreads and sort of any pussy discharge, um, that seems to watch out for. And that would be the case when you would go to your GP or to your minor injuries unit to get antibiotics. GP would be the best, um, best kind of port of call for that to get antibiotics and um, to get that sorted. Yeah, so just keep an eye on it, keep it clean, and hopefully you should heal up soon. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, it takes time for feet to settle down and often they can be sore for a while, but that's not surprising when what we've asked them to do, really. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a big ask, isn't it, doing these long races and doing things like the Cape Wrath Ultra and Dragon's Back. Um, well, that's been absolutely brilliant, though. Like, I've got a list of all these things that I need to now put in the film description and in the podcast show notes so that people can find all these bits and bobs um, that you've talked about tonight, Nikki. Um, but yeah, I just want to say a massive thank you. And like, what's uh, just tell everyone what's next for you personally, then. 
Um, so if it happens, I've got a spine race again in January because doing it once was not enough. <laughs> Out for the win. <laughs> And then um, hopefully, um, the, um, hopefully going to do a Paddy Buckley round um, in late spring, um, and then uh, Dragon's about a year after. So we'll we'll just see lots lots of adventures. But who knows with COVID? But just keeping running, keeping happy, um, keeping fit, and see what the year brings. Fantastic. Well, it's been so brilliant um, to chat to you tonight. Um, we've had like record numbers of live viewers, so that's brilliant. I think everyone's really, really enjoyed it. Um, oh, they have. There's some stuff coming up. Deb says, thanks, Nikki. And Geordie Flip says, thank you. Brilliant. Um, Sue says, um, great show. Thank you, Claire and Nikki. Have really helpful advice. No excuse for blisters now. <laughs> um, and Gord Gordon says, looks like a good one um, to watch later. Um, he's missed the start, so he has to catch up again. Um, fantastic yeah so thank you so much Nikki it's been great to chat to you um, and uh, hopefully see you at an event soon perfect that's great thanks for having me take care everybody bye yeah bye <laughs>